This is Governor Walter Dasno from Santa Clara. I would like to emphasize that it is very, very critical for those of you that are more specifically um, voting for the first time or, or, or considering voting for the first time to consider uh, learning uh, what it means to, to vote, number one, and then number two, uh, the processes that you have to follow in order to vote. You have, as um, a citizen of the United States of America, the right to register and then to vote. Many people don't, don't really exercise that because they say, well, what significance and what difference does it make uh, on my one vote? Well, certainly uh, that's important, but when you collectively get 10 friends together, that's 10 votes. If you get 100 people together, that's 100 votes. So you are one of a number of votes. Voter registration and voting is extremely important in our tribal communities. You know, we didn't have the right to vote until 1948, and there's still parts of New Mexico where, where Indian people um, struggle um, to be able to exercise their right to vote. We have about 200,000 native people in New Mexico, 65,000 of whom are registered. We really should be able to register more than 100,000 people. And because of that, we should be able to influence not just local elections and regional elections, but entire state elections. We're a swing vote. And also, all of our issues really uh, are, depend upon having Indian people and tribal leaders actively involved in the political process um, to make sure that our rights are protected, our sovereignty is protected, that we get the kind of services and resources that the state and federal government should be providing to us. The young people are very critical in the political process. I can't um, emphasize enough the urgency of all Native Americans, especially the youth, because as they do this, they prepare for the future and they set an example to the younger ones. Our seniors, uh, you know, they're getting age, up in age, and they are our, um, our vision from way past. So youth need to learn from them, so we need to take care of them. And since we as tribes don't have the necessary facilities to accommodate some of their needs, it's best, you know, to get involved in the political system to attract resources from out here to within so the tribal governments can have the opportunity to develop such um, programs uh, to care for their seniors. Do you guys think, like, youth like me, I'm 19 years old, is it important for us to start voting at our age? Well, you know, voting, there's, if you can vote in Santa Clara here, then you feel that you're a part of it. If our community of Santa Clara goes out and votes for, this, for state representatives, then of course we feel like we have a voice in the, in the state system as well, or in the federal system. But, but there's a level of, of voting responsibilities that we have, and it always begins at home. I feel like, you know, going to register to be able to vote is very important, because from my perspective, I would never cared about voting or even registered to vote because I didn't think it was important at the time. But over the couple of weeks, being at the legislator um, gave me a whole different perspective of how, how come it's important for a lot of the community, a lot of um, Pueblos and a lot of our elders and youth and just our whole community to start registering and get our voice out there. You know, we have about 6,500 Native American voters now we have 22, 23 tribes in the state of New Mexico. And we have young people that are attaining the age of 18 that are, could be registered to vote in this next upcoming uh, primary and general election. Uh, every time, every year, we have uh, our native youth attaining the voting age. And so we need to hit those young people so they'd be able to be in this process. It's been a long time coming. And, and you know the voter, the voters that are Native American are so crucial, especially in our state government, because it, they can make a big difference in how we set our system of, of our tribal governance, our relationship with the state of New Mexico, and our relationship with neighboring communities. If we can empower voters that are Native American, we can make a huge difference in our congressional election, the United States presidency, the governor of the state of New Mexico. So we, we play a major, major influence, but we need more voters than the 6,400 that I spoke about.
way I got to register is by working with the court system and a lot of them were complaining about the federal government, how it's not fair and judges would say, well, you know what, if you don't think anything is fair, then go vote. You need to vote for your judicial system. You need to vote for your county commissioners. You need to vote for I mean, school board. I mean, there's a lot of things you need to vote for. And if, in order to do all of that, you need to be registered to vote. And then once you're registered in the voting, you need to really look at who you're voting for, if they're going to be there for your community, do what they say they're going to do to help the Native people. So that is something you care about, and that becomes an issue that you work towards doing something about it. Mm -hmm. and, and, if, and if the choice was, I'm going to go vote for this person because this person is going to help me do what I would like to see happen in this community. Yeah, for myself. For and yourself for my and, for, and for the people that you love. We come here every day rep representing tribes and protecting their interests. And uh, we need to continue to get voter, voters out. We need to continue to get young voters out. They're our future. Um, I've dealt with a lot of different issues here at the state legislature, from taxation to cultural properties to gaming, um, water. And uh, there's a lot of education that needs to be had here at the New Mexico State Legislature. And there's, there's a handful of us with tribal leadership that come here every year to battle these issues and to educate the legislature. So what that means is that we need to get our, our vote out, young vote, and, and just all tribal members. Uh, because we need that support with our we need that support with our leg legislators that come to New Mexico to the state capitol to represent us. All of these things are part of this process, and for those of us engaged in this process, it is a challenge every day. Uh, one to protect our interest where we see challenges, or it's a challenge in creating policies that come forward through tribal leaders and tribal representatives so that we frame policies and laws that are in our best interest and not laws that conflict because it goes against the things that we care most about so that what we do in this time might be the same way that tribal leaders and their representatives have worked to preserve and protect all of the things that we enjoy. And what are they? our land, our language, our culture, our religion that defines our way of life and our spirituality, our children, our elderly, our communities, our families, our resources. Santa Clara's numbers have gone up in the voting and it shows a block of votes and we can show the legislature that we have a block of votes that can swing. We're a swing and every vote counts. In Rio Reba, you can win by 20, 30 votes. If we have a block of 500 to 1,000 votes, we can turn the votes. New Mexico, as you may have heard on uh, the news, is a swing state. And in the last general election, uh, before Obama, uh, New Mexico uh, voted for a Republican. In New Mexico, Bush won by 314 votes. So it shows how important it is for people to vote. If, if uh, maybe perhaps more youth, uh, whether they be Navajo or Pueblo or uh, uh, Hispanic, um, had registered to vote or other people had registered to vote, uh, New Mexico could have pulled the other way. Voter registration and voting is huge for Indian people. Um, our people have fought long and hard for that right to vote. Um, in this state alone, my grandfather, who was born in 1900, was not born with the right to vote in this state. Um, he was indigenous to these lands. He full-blooded Sandia Pueblo, and yet he was born without the right to vote. And so it is so important that if we are going to have a say in the federal government, in the state government, how things are funded, we must participate by number one, registering to vote, and number two, showing up at the polls for people who support the Indian causes. If somebody is not doing their job and ignoring us, well, we can say with our block of votes, you can't ignore us any longer. We can, and we do have a say. I would like to know like, what you would 
want to, I mean, tell the youth to encourage them to vote because some of them feel like, well, if I vote, what is it going to do for me personally? What is it going to do for my family? What is it going to do for the tribe? Some of them don't see that it gets this building or that it helps programs. To tell you the truth, when I was your age, I wasn't thinking about voting. It didn't concern me. Not until my later years did I begin to understand that my voice counts and that my voice matters. And if we have a collection of voices, then something happens, something gets done. So I'm just really excited that you all are thinking about these kinds of questions. I'm proud of you guys. Keep doing this kind of work. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family members about why it's important to vote, why it matters. For me, it became really clear and obvious. Any of us have gone to hunt at Popihana. We all know where Popihana is. Popihana would have never came back to us if we didn't learn how to use the political process and get allies to support us. Now we got that headwaters back, and especially because of the fire, those trees that are alive in there, the water that flows from there, that's what's going to restore us. That's what's going to bring our canyon back to life. And we wouldn't have had that return to us if we didn't politi uh, participate in the political process. There are so many issues that impact us daily. Everything from water rights, water quality, health care, education. This is for our kids. If you don't do it for ourselves, at least do it for our future generations. Get involved, make a difference. If you don't are not registered to vote, if you don't show up to the polls, then what can we say if it doesn't go in our favor? If we do not get involved in how are we going to know, you know, what what things that we, I mean, what are the things we can work with and, um, and deal with in a, in a positive level to get an equal, you know, playing field. Grandmothers, grandfathers used to tell us, don't vote, don't vote, because if you vote, they're going to take your name down, and once you get your name, uh, say, in Espanola or Santa Fe, uh, they're going to tax you. They're going to tax you personally, they're going to tax your land, and now you're going to lose your land. But things have changed now. In this modern world, you have to uh, vote, and the vote is very important. And if you can do it as a block and tell this politician, this is how much vote we can give you if we get some of these things. We're not doing this individually, uh, but we could do it in coalitions. We could do it as blocks. For instance, in the Pueblo of Santa Clara, we may have a thousand people, and I'm just illustrating this as a number. We may have a thousand people that will vote. Well, there's another thousand people at Okeowinger. There's another thousand people at uh, uh, Santo Domingo. There's another thousand people at, at Esleta, another thousand people at um, Laguna. So collectively, uh, just within those numbers, that's about six to 7,000 votes that we have. Here in New Mexico, it's very, very significant because we don't have a large population. The direction we're going now, you know, maybe the youth can start voting early and start picking those right people that we feel that is right for the job in office. I went to school in Espanola, elementary and high school. And we used to walk from Espanola to Wachiponga on our way back to Santa Clara. So we used to talk about different things. But a lot of the time, we talk about politics and how things get done and what our ambitions were going to be. And so that's how I got into politics. And I started voting uh, as soon as I could, you know, uh, probably 18. I emphasize to you as young people, don't consider uh, that your vote doesn't count. It definitely does. And certainly uh, your contribution in the voting process plays out in a very, very important way. Encourage your friends, encourage your neighbors, encourage those people that are, are, are young but maybe um, that have thought, well, uh, I don't need to register, I don't need to vote, please tell them it is important. We may have our elders that are set in their ways and they believe that, you know, it's the white man's way. But nowadays, I think it's important for tribal leadership to encourage our young um, high school, coming out of high school, and those that are entering into college to be registered voters and to utilize the, the system that we have here, legislation. Legislation helps out Pueblo people uh, as far as capital outlay. You know, we, we, we also got to oppose some of these bills because they impact our, our very, very uh, life support. Like, in, for instance, uh, gas tax uh, plays a big part in our Pueblo lives. Uh, at Acoma, we have a gas 
uh, a gas station that serves, um, you know, the, the I-40 corridor. And the revenues generated from there help out with our um, police and our tribal courts, our public works, our, our trash uh, and wastewater and domestic water issues. So uh, they contribute a great deal of money as far as tax goes. So um, legislation at the state level and at the national level is very important. I go back to 1948. 1948, there was an individual by the name of Miguel Trujillo. He was from the Pueblo of Asleta. He was married at Laguna. Prior to 1948, our, our Pueblo people, our native people, did not have the right to vote. Although our people served in World War II, we had canes given to us by other governments, um, but we did not have the right to vote. And it was his work, his effort, and his sacrifice to get us this right to vote that we need to continue to perpetuate and be thankful for the sacrifice and effort that he put forward. So supporting legislation, supporting the, the congressional process, the state legislative process, and being involved is absolutely critical for Pueblo people because it allows us to continue to con protect our lands, protect our resources, and, and as tribal leaders, most importantly, continue to protect our people. The more that we start voting and getting it out to our community, the more the youth will become curious, you know. Uh, little kids are really curious, you know, they're like, well, what's happening over there? I'll go check it out. And then that's when a lot of the elders and a lot of the voters can encourage these youth, you know, someday you're going to be at this position, you know. This is going to help us with a lot of our problems here in our community. I have, I have a big heart and a lot of dreams, and hopefully someday when I grow older, you know, I could see a change in this community or even I can bring a change to this community. There's a, a lot of issues here that need to be addressed. I mean, like substance abuse, the, um, obesity, we're trying to get, I mean, being working with recreation, you get a lot of heat because you don't, we don't do enough for the kids. But yet we put stuff out for the kids, it's just they don't participate. And I feel that it's like, it should be the parents, they should learn from the parents, follow. I mean, if they see the parents doing it, then I feel the kid, the children will want to participate. I tell my kids that, uh, uh, that they have to vote, but before you vote, you have to register. You have to take the time and fill out the papers or go to the county seat and register and, and be certified that you can vote and carry your little card that you, your, uh, <clears throat> you can vote in New Mexico. So you have to register first and then vote. What's the process to, to get someone to register to vote? We have the process here at Santa Clara. If someone were wishing to register to vote, we have a number of people that can be, be contacted. Um, we have a number uh, you can call uh, the governor's office, and then we will we'll relay that call. So I would suggest that you contact us here at the governor's office at 753-7330. Then we will let those persons that are, that are going to register you to vote uh, to come in to do that. Uh, it's a very, very, very simple process. It won't take you no more than five minutes. For our community here to have a place that one can just walk to, literally, to go vote is so exciting because I think most of the, most of the time, like people in this community um, don't want to go look for where the DMV is or, or where some other office is in town. But we all know where the senior center or a tribal administration is and for us to say, wow, and we, can, we, we have a place to go vote. That's a good idea, you know, bringing early registration, early voting into our community so we can come as together as a community and vote together.